YouTube, what is going on guys and welcome back to another video. I am just now waking up. I probably still got crust in my eye, you feel what I'm saying? So good morning to everybody, or maybe this is your night. But guys, I just got done reading Dragon Ball Super Chapter 71. And yo, <laughs> yo, we are getting to a point where this is starting to all make sense. But before we hop into this chapter, guys, you already know what we got to do. <laughs> Let's start this haunting. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back. Yo, let's talk, okay? So, last chapter. Okay, we got introduced to, well, we re we really didn't get introduced, but we, at the same time, we still got introduced because we don't know no nothing really about them, but we got introduced to the heaters, okay? We found out that the heaters work with Frieza as business partners, okay? Coming to find out, we also know about Granola making his wish to become the strongest in the universe, yet we still have the question surfacing around, since we... Since Super is about multiverses, is Granola stronger than people in the multiverse, which kind of what makes sense, or is he only stronger in a certain universe? We have to understand this question, but diving deep into this chapter, we got to see both aspects of everything. We got a good chunk of the training arc between Beerus, Goku, Vegeta, and Whis. We got a great chunk of the heaters discovering and really breaking down their plan and getting it into action. And then we have Granola, okay? We have him actually, you know, all right, it's time. I'm ready, okay? Let's start with the first thing. The training arc between Goku, Vegeta, and, and, and you know, Whis and, and Beerus, okay? Yo, the main thing that Whis gets to explain to Goku is, listen, there's a difference between us angels and you and you sans or you humans, okay? The simple fact of the matter is, with this technique of ultra instinct, okay, you have to realize that in order to, to really master ultra instinct, you have to keep your mind and your heart calm, okay? You have to keep it at a Okay, I could focus level because at the end of the day, Weiss has always stated the difference between angels and them is the fact that they're they never turn off ultra instinct. Okay, and he told Goku what Goku has to realize is and what everyone I feel has to realize is is that everybody is starting to think Ultra Instinct is a transformation. It is not a transformation. It is only a transformation for Goku because the simple fact of the matter, Saiyan's bodies adapt, okay? So Goku's body, it's not, it's the Ultra Instinct is not a transformation because the power of the technique is so much Goku's body just adapted in order for his body to hold the Ultra Instinct. That is why it looks as a transformation because it adapted and changed Goku's body. While as we have to remember everybody outside of the Saiyan race, okay? Which is, mind you, Ultra Instinct is a technique first, okay? So what he tries to explain to Goku is, okay, I know that you're a Saiyan, but get that out of your mind. You have to use it first as a technique before you can use it as a transformation in your case, okay? Meaning, Goku finally started to understand. He said, wait a minute. So you mean to tell me I have to understand how to use it just by base without having to activate it, okay? Which means it's it's sort of like the training with Blue, okay? Remember when they did Blue and everybody was talking about, oh, Vegeta, how, how is it that he skipped God and went Blue? That doesn't make sense because at the end of the day, in order to have Super Saiyan Blue... Blue is nothing more than a stacked on power that surpassed God. So we have to understand in order for Vegeta to get blue, he has to have 
God. Same thing with Ultra Instinct. You feel what I'm saying? In order for him to use the technique, he has to quit using it as a transformation and relying on it as a transformation. Rather than, he needs to use it as a base. Okay? And that's what's going to allow him to ascend it to the different levels. Let's look at it. So as you can see here, Weiss's staff is coming behind him, but Weiss doesn't even have to take a look behind him to even dodge it, okay? Goku looks and he gets hit with it off the rip. So you see the staff starts to hit the ground. He says, Al, Weiss says, it's that we are always in the ultra instinct state. While you are on the other hand, yeah, I know. I got to transform first to use Ultra Instinct. My body doesn't just, just just dodge stuff on its own, right? This is where he comes in. Not exactly. It's that you're equating Ultra Instinct to a transformation. When your heart is calm, your body should move on its own no matter what form you're in. So he, he catches his staff and he proceeds to say, so you're saying I got to figure out how to use Ultra Instinct in my normal form. Yes, doing that will free you of the stamina drain that is creating the time limit. So as you can read right there, Goku, the problem with Goku, the reason why he cannot activate Ultra Instinct to its full extent is because he keeps breaking it down as if it's a transformation. You can't do that. Then, with him saying that, all right, with we stating that, okay, you, you sh when your heart is calm, you should be able to move freely, no matter what form you're in. That means that, let's really be honest, y'all. Let's really be honest. This ultra instinct form that we're seeing Goku in, like the silver hair, you know what I mean? The silver aura, the silver eyes and everything. Who's to say that that's just what it would look like as him activating it in base? Because that's what it is. Because let's really be honest, when he uses Ultra Instinct, it's not a transformation beyond Super Saiyan. You feel what I'm saying? So that's why he stays in his base form and his hair gets silver. Is because it's trying to react off of the base. Because it's only a technique, not a transformation. But by we stating, no matter what form you're in, we could actually see Goku, Super Saiyan Blue, using Ultra Instinct. Mind you, it's a technique, not a transformation. So if Goku, Goku can go Super Saiyan 2 all he likes, all he has to do is adapt the technique. You feel what I'm saying? And now that he's a powerhouse at Super Saiyan 2 using angel abilities, Ultra Instinct, okay? This is getting wonderful. We cannot count out Vegeta either because Vegeta has been going... Hey, I'm learning Hakai. You know what I'm saying? He's been learning the destruction energy that Beerus wields, okay? And it's it's wonderful, okay? This is wonderful. So as the chapter continues on, they start to get it and they do a little bit more training. And we actually start to see it become progressing, okay? Let me show it to you. Okay, right here, as you can tell... Goku has his eyes closed and it says, meanwhile, he's dodging everything, base form, focusing, keeping his heart, you know, calm and everything. Whis is, Whis is doing everything to, to, you know what I mean? So it's not like Goku knows where it's coming. Whis is manipulating the staff to do whatever. And Goku is effortlessly without a, without a, uh, you know, a sweat. He's dodging it. He's letting his heart be calm and letting his body do the reacting. As you can see, it's starting to get close to Goku's face. And what does he do? He taps it with one finger and moves it to the side. He's learning Ultra Instinct in base form. Then you see that the staff comes right behind, right behind Goku like it did Whis in the beginning of the chapter. And what does Goku do? He flips behind it and he stands on the staff. Look. You see Weiss. Weiss is like, yo, that's my dog. You learning. You learning, bro. You learning. And look, Goku is happy, satisfied with himself. He's finally understanding, even though Goku is not fully mastered Ultra Instinct, he's getting there. Let's go over to Vegeta's side. You know what I mean? Vegeta. 
He's seeing these, you know, he's learning Hakai energy and how to destroy things at a matter like level. Okay. As you can see, there's logs just dropping down and Vegeta hurriedly goes up to the log and he immediately destroys it with Hakai. Some more logs are coming down and he's destroying it more with Hakai. And as you can see at the top of the river, it's Beerus who's throwing down these logs. He's training Vegeta. Even though Beerus is a god of destruction, he still loves Vegeta. He sees himself in Vegeta, okay? Then finally, the biggest test of them all portrays. Beerus drops the biggest one of them all. And what does Vegeta do? He tests his limit. And as you can see right here, he destroys the whole log with Hakai, okay? And Beerus hits him on the head, you know. But he's actually proud of Vegeta. He's like, you know, you destroyed my land, but yo, you did it, okay? All right? So as you can see right there, their training is going so well. They are doing it, okay? They are really surpassing their limits. Goku learning Ultra Instinct and Base Form. Vegeta learning how to finally control Hakai and use it. Excuse me. This is really getting... I can't, I, I can't even wrap my head around it because I'm seeing the progress, okay? Now, let's move on to the other big part of this story. The heaters. We cannot take our, our mind off of the heaters, okay? The heaters. They finally go in and they, they, they diverge their plan. But in order to diverge their plan, they got to have a, some sort of setup. Here's how they do it, okay? So the main guy lets them know, hey, yo, go over to, uh, go over to Zuno, you know what I mean? Holla at him but because he, he knows of these things. He's like, figure out Goku and Vegeta's weakness so that we may be able to exploit that weakness and make them do what we say in order to do the plan that we need them to do. Here's the plan, okay? I'm not going to lie to you. I was literally sitting down like, yo, what weakness does Vegeta and Goku really have? Like they're saying, they've been on Earth mad long, like they've been beating everything. Let me show you what their weakness is. And it's the most simple thing that we all forgot. And it's right in plain view every single chapter. Yep, that's right. Who are you folks exactly? Pals of my Goku? We've never actually met your husband, but we have a request for him. Well, I'll have you know that he hasn't been home for months. Might he ask? Might we ask you to summon him here for us? We've heard that Goku is not one to defy your commands. I was hoping he'd show his face around here soon again. The cash we got from Hercules running dry, so my Goku's got to find some work soon. Money troubles, is it? We've got the perfect job for your husband. Now, I'm going to cut that right there because I don't, I feel like I don't need to go on with that, okay? That's the weakness, okay? Forgetting the fact of Saiyan heritage, Saiyans, yeah, they had families, but they didn't care because they were warriors, you know what I mean? Family was nothing because at the end of the day, it's like we're built to be warriors. We live, we die, you know what I mean? We we live, we fight, we get stronger, you know? But Goku and Vegeta are the first Saiyans to really have families, you know what I mean? To really embrace their family, you know what I mean? And that is their weakness. Using that... They exploit and get Goku and Vegeta back to Earth, okay, from their training, all right? Then they pretty much use Goku and Vegeta, mind you. Why is Granola so mad? Yes, he wants Frieza to die, but remember, Frieza used who? The Saiyans. So what is, so what does, um, I believe, who is this? Elect, um, I can't remember her name, but long story short. It's just so crazy because she then calls Granola, okay? And she's like, hey, Granola, listen. Finally got some word and details about everything. Oh, you got Freezer's location? Nah, 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 nah. We got something even better, though. We heard that they're saying still alive. Granola's like, what? Saiyans still alive? What you mean? He was like, and then that's when she tells Granola, hey, they're actually Frieza's goons. You know what I mean? 
They're part of Frieza's army. They're coming to kill you. They got wind that you trying to come to Earth. That you trying to do stuff. So what you what you what you want what you want to do? This is how they get Granola to fall into the ploy's hand. Okay, using that hatred that Granola has towards the Sands and Frieza, lures Goku and Vegeta right to Granola. Because Granola automatically thinks, oh, yeah, y'all Saiyans, y'all automatically work with Frieza. Y'all going to tell me where Frieza is at. But Goku and Vegeta are under the impression like, yo, you're the strongest in the universe. We got to take you out because they saying something. While meanwhile, the real people in the background throwing the strings is the heaters. OK, let me show it to you. So as you can see, she starts to ring. She starts to ring up uh, Granola, Planet Cereal. So Granola he answers, it's Mackie. Sorry for the wait, Granola. Good, I was running out of patience. Well, do you have it? Freeze's location? Yep, we finally found him. Really? Where? I'm ready to ship out. The thing is, our scouting squad screwed up on this one. They let it slip that you're gunning for Freeze's head. What? Got a whole plan. Word is, word is two of Freeze's assassins are making for cereal right now. He said, members of Frieza's army are coming for me? We think so. Sorry about that. No, this works in my favor, actually. The perfect chance for me to strike back and beat Frieza's location out of them directly. Gee, what a great idea. Ah, one more thing you should know. Yes, these two goons are apparently members of that extinct Saiyan tribe. Wh what? Guess there were a few survivors, huh? There are Saiyans who are still alive? The tribe that drove the Cerulean's to extinction? That's what they say anyway. But you got this, buddy. We'll be in touch. Just this plan. And that last bit got his attention, just like we thought. So as you can see, she's she's diver she's divulging this plan to make everything come into one in order to make the heater's main plan the thing, all right? Yo, like she's very sly she's very very smart and intelligent on how to do this stuff mackie is very very smart but i'm not gonna lie to you guys even though this is great and all and that's cool and things like that the main thing that i really have a problem is i feel as though there's a bigger person that might pull the strings of this whole heaters operation okay and i really want everybody to take a look and keep your eye on this person right here I want everyone to pay attention to gas, okay? Gas, what's wrong, gas? I wish you had let me fight him as well. I've got no doubts about how strong you are. You might have even won that fight, but I'd hate to think about the worst case scenario. Your moment to fight is yet to come. Listen, you're the only member of this family who could surpass Frieza himself. Just relax. The wind's blowing our way now. If everything goes nice and smooth, when the dust settles, the supreme force in the universe will be the heaters. So, like I said, like it, like it's being stated in the in the in the chapter. I really believe Gas may be the main person in the last one that's really standing out of all the heaters because, like, like you heard the main guy say, "Yo." You are the only one in this family who has the power to surpass Frieza. Not only that, but he even believes he had enough power to take down Granola even after Granola wished that he was the strongest in the universe, which also leads us back to the question I've been asking this whole time. What power scale is Granola? OK, we still have to talk about this because let's really be honest. If you guys make this man granola get wiped off the planet, just like on some, I don't know, Madara type time where he's like, oh, yeah, he's all big and bad, but he gets smoked by some simple stuff. It better be. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. If if you do that to granola, OK, if you guys do that to granola. The main man who better be in the talks better be somebody from the heaters and it better be gas. It has to be gas. Anybody else to thwart this plan and try to manipulate it and puppet it 
A, to me, is going to look weird because we didn't get introduced to anybody else. But, hey, you know how some mangas are. They might pull it out of the hat. But then again, it's like we've been given so much details thrown onto the table where it's like, yo, it could be right here. It could be this person to the point where it's like looking anywhere else is like, OK, what do you really have to do with this? You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say I really feel as though gas is the real man behind this ploy. He And then he even stated, he said, yo, worst case scenario, we can't have you getting smoked, gas. Why? Because at the end of the day. You, out of all the heaters, have the most potential to surpass Frieza and put our name on the map where it should have been, okay? Yo, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But I'm not sorry. But I am sorry. But I'm not sorry for the simple fact that both of these manga talks, the Baruto and Dragon Ball Super, have been so long. But... We've been getting packed with information. We have to talk about it all. I hope you guys have been watching these videos to the end because I definitely appreciate it. And I hope you guys are understanding the story just like I am. And this story is heating up, okay? It's heating up, all right? We got Goku learning Ultra Instinct, Vegeta learning how to become a god of destruction. We got Granola out here trying to take revenge for... He's not a bad guy. He's just taking revenge for what he lost. You know what I mean? We got the heaters out there trying to stack up the plan against Frieza because they in a business plan with him. And they think Frieza pretty much snaked them. And they should be the main people up on top. Then you got Frieza. And then we can't forget about Frieza. We can't be. We can't forget about Frieza because Frieza is the main ploy. Frieza is the main ploy. Okay. So we have to look at two possible people that's going to take over this operation behind the scenes. You got gas. And you got Frieza, okay? You heard it here first. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you already know what to do. Don't be afraid to hover and haunt that like button. Subscribe today to become part of the Soul Gang team. Nephilim, let's get it. Tap that notification bell to know each and every time that I upload. And, guys, remember to be good at the game. You got to kill with skill. And until our next nightmare, yo, this chapter has been off the chain. Until chapter 72, y'all, this is Gamer's Nightmare out with Manga Talk. Peace.